This video is about installing radio antennas in a space restricted environment. I have these three radios, two mono banders and a dual bander, representing uh, 2 meters, 220, 440, and 6 meters. And I've got them basically hooked up to mobile antennas, which are screwed onto my metallic rain gutter, which actually works quite well with the exception of the, the height. And, and so I wanted to pick up a little bit of height, but I didn't want to put up four antennas just because I didn't want to. I know that's not very ham-like of me, but that's just who I am. At any rate, this video is about the process of combining these four frequencies onto one coax and one antenna. Here's my original setup, one dual bander mobile on one side of the house and three mono bander mobile antennas on the other side of the house, and they actually work fairly well. One of the characteristics uh, considered in this project was what are my signal levels coming in from various repeaters around where I live. Well, as I live in Central California, which is a long valley, and if you will notice on the right there's a green line. That green line represents mountains that are f between four and maybe 7,000 feet tall, and a lot of them have amateur repeaters on them. On the left is a coast range, maybe 1,200 to 2,500 feet tall, also with some amateur repeaters up there. So I've got a lot of signal level coming into me. I can hit repeaters about 100 miles north and south of me. And that was a consideration on my choice of antennas. The first question that came up on this project is how do you combine four transmit and receive frequencies on a single coaxial cable? And I decided to do that via mobile duplexers and triplexers. After a little design time, I decided to use the Diamond 72D duplexer along with the MX324 triplexer and in conjunction with the MX-62M duplexer. These devices were chosen for their frequency characteristics as well as the type and gender of the connectors. Here is the network design diagram that I came up with for this project. These devices, uh, the diamond duplexer triplexers, are all 50 ohm devices, so they plug up together quite nicely. The SWIR remains clean through them. The SWIR, uh, looking into the uh, end of the filter towards the antenna, was basically 1.25 to 1 in most cases, and not much more in, in other cases. The total loss through the system from all the way back from the, du from the uh, dual band transceiver was about 2B, 2 dB, not quite and a little less as you got closer to the antenna. And the only thing odd here is I already had I already owned a dual band transceiver. I didn't want to buy two mono band radios. So I basically took a dual band transceiver that was already duplexed 220 I mean uh, 2 meters to 440 and put it through the MX72D duplexer and unduplex it using the duplexer backwards and then combined it into the system up on the MX324 and on out to the antenna. The second question was what antenna to use and that was fairly easy because at that particular time there weren't a whole lot of antennas that were usable in multi-band functions at least not with 6 meters, uh, 220, 140 and uh, UHF all together other than uh, uh, custom made expensive antennas and so without any uh, hesitation I chose to use a disc on. I'm using the Diamond D130J disc cone for this project basically because it's a nice healthy looking uh, disc cone that has good write-ups in uh, eHAM and, and various reviewing uh, ham websites and uh, it's as simple as that. It's got a UHF uh, port on it and it puts together quite easily and doesn't weigh much and goes up in the air quite nicely. Here's the filter network as I mounted it. It's mounted on a shelving type board and then screwed the type of my 1990s uh, fake oak shelf and it sits there kind of out of kicking range and of course there's not much to do with it so that whatever it's doing it's doing it right there the long cable by the way comes from the antenna and you can 
if you look closely, you'll see three others that come from the various radios. And that's all there is to it. Here's some pictures of the discone as it's mounted. By using the discone and the filters, I've lost approximately 7 dB on my UHF and 5 dB on my VHF, but I've more than made up for it with the extra elevation. In fact, I'm probably about 3 to 4 repeaters to the good on both VHF and UHF. And so it, it's been a fun project, and it's uh, actually picked up a little bit. I could actually make up for my lost DB, some of my lost DBs by replacing the RG8X I've got on there right now with RG, well, I'm sorry, with LMR400, which I'm thinking about. Any rates, it was a good project. I enjoyed it, and I'm going to go use my radios. Mm -hmm.